Now that we've cut off the bulk of the rock chip from our slides, we are ready to initiate the final stage of the thin section making process, which is to grind away the remaining material on our slide to a thickness of 30 microns. I will warn you right now that this is the step in the process where most thin sections are ruined and go badly, so you want to proceed with extreme caution. Rushing this part of the process can result in fracturing of your sample or an uneven thickness on the thin section. Even worse, it's remarkably easy to grind away the entire section off of the slide. This is a great reason to prepare multiple chips and slides from your rock samples whenever possible so you have them as a backup should you accidentally ruin a thin section during the final grinding stage. As we've done before, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the vacuum pump and the geoform. Once the equipment has been powered on, I will inspect the vacuum chuck to make sure it is clean and free from debris. It's going to be important to maintain a tight vacuum seal on our slides during the grinding process or else we risk damaging our slide. Take a moment to inspect the surface of the glass slide to make sure it is also clean and free from any dust or debris. Once you've verified that everything looks clean, I'll turn on the water on the grinding side of the geoform and wet my slide to create a better vacuum seal, just like we did when we frosted our slides and we used the cutoff saw. Use the beveled off corner to orient the slide on the vacuum chuck in the same position that was used when the slide was frosted. This helps ensure that the rock will be ground away from the slide evenly and parallel to the surface of the glass slide. When the slide is in position, go ahead and turn on the vacuum. Before proceeding, Make sure there is enough pressure to hold the sample chip securely on the vacuum chuck and adjust if necessary. Next, I want to make sure that my slide is clear of the grinding wheel before starting. So I'm going to turn on the micrometer and move the vacuum chuck away from the grinding wheel. Recall that when I frosted these slides earlier, I set the micrometer to zero at the point that the slide was in contact with the grinding wheel. I can now use this micrometer as an estimate to determine when I'm approaching a thin section thickness of 30 microns. If you're unsure whether the micrometer was set to zero during the frosting stage or have concerns that the settings may have been altered, you can advance your slide so that the glass is in contact with the grinding wheel, not the rock, and set the micrometer to zero at that time. In my experience, this is not as accurate as setting the micrometer to zero during the frosting stage, so care should be taken if you use this method. However, depending upon the setup that you have and the equipment you have, you may not even have a micrometer such as this. And that's okay, you can still do a thin section. The micrometer simply serves as a guide to help us estimate when we're approaching the appropriate thin section thickness. In fact, we won't even be taking our thin sections down to the 30 micron thickness on the geoform. We're far more likely to destroy our slide that way. Rather, we'll get it down to a thickness of 100 microns, maybe a little bit less, then we'll pull the slide from the equipment and we'll finish the remaining grinding and polishing by hand using glass plates and powdered grits. With the vacuum chuck and slide clear of the grinding wheel, we can go ahead and close the splash guards and start the equipment. At this point, slowly advance the slide towards the grinding wheel while gently rocking the arm back and forth. Take care to keep the rock positioned over the grinding wheel as you advance. You will be able to hear and feel when the rock on your slide makes contact with the grinding wheel. Continue to carefully advance the vacuum chuck, gently rocking the sample back and forth across the grinding wheel until you can hear and feel that the wheel is in constant contact with the surface of the rock sample. Do your best to keep only the rock in contact with the grinding wheel. Rocking the slide too far in either direction such that the rock moves on and off of the grinding wheel may create an uneven surface or damage your thin section. So do your best to keep the grinding wheel in contact with the rock sample only. During the chip polishing process, there were some subtle differences in the amount of time it took to polish down our samples of apolite, granodiorite nice, and catoctin greenstone due to differences in the mineral composition. The apolite and granodiorite nice took a little bit longer to polish down, whereas working with the greenstone went a bit more quickly. The same will hold true during this part of the process as well. As I mentioned at the beginning, your thin sections are most likely to fail during this stage, usually because of grinding too fast. When using powered equipment such as the geoform, it can be very tempting to rush this part of the process, so do your best to stay patient. Keep this in mind, 
If the grinding wheel is making noise against your rock sample, it is removing some of your rock sample. You don't have to advance the slide at all to remove a small thickness from the slide. The greatest care should be taken as the rock material becomes increasingly thin. It's surprisingly easy to go from too thick to too thin to completely ground away without even advancing your slide at all. Grinding away your entire rock sample is only one concern. If you grind too fast, the minerals in your sample may become cracked or fractured, or the sample may become too thin at the edges and too thick in the center, either of which will produce an undesired result. The key to success, go slow, go slow, go slow. You will get a better feel for this part of the process the more often you do it. Just keep in mind that different rock types will grind away at different rates, so you will need to adjust your pace accordingly. As you continue rocking the slide back and forth, you will begin to feel less resistance of the rock sample on the grinding wheel, which is usually an indication that you can advance your slide. In the beginning of this process, I'm only going to advance my slide in 100 micron increments until the slide is at an approximate thickness of 200 microns. I want to make sure that I've removed as much rock material as possible and that I'm maintaining an even surface on my rock sample before I advance the slide each time. Continue this process of grinding and advancing your slide in 100 micron increments until you've reached an approximate thin section thickness of around 200 microns. From this point forward, continue the grinding process, but advance your slide in 20 micron increments instead. Your rock sample will be getting quite thin by now, so you want to proceed even more slowly and carefully, especially if you're using powered equipment such as the Geoform. It's probably safe to continue grinding your sample down to a thickness of 100 microns, but in my experience with this equipment, you're taking your chances if you decide to proceed further. This is the part of the process where trial and error and over time experience will help you best judge when it's time to stop and pull your sample from the equipment. For harder rock samples such as the Aplite or Granodiorite Nice, it may be possible to continue grinding until you approach a thickness closer to 50 microns, but even if you're taking extremely great care, your entire sample can be lost in an instant, along with all the time and hard work it's taken you to get to this point. You will not be alone if you ruin a thin section during this part of the process. It's happened to all of us. Again, this is why I prepare multiple sample chips and slides whenever possible, so I have a backup should I ruin or damage one, especially during the grinding stage. Once your sample has been ground down to a thickness of 100 microns or less, it is time to pull the slide from the equipment. Using the sidearm, carefully move the sample away from the grinding wheel before turning it and the water flow off. Make sure you have a grip on your slide before turning off the vacuum and carefully pull it from the vacuum chuck. If you have additional samples to grind, simply repeat this process for each one. Once all of your samples have been ground down to a thickness approaching 30 microns, they are now ready for the final grinding stage using glass plates and powdered grit.